Hi, um, today we're going to tie one of these. Um, my previous video, I just showed you this and I had quite a few requests as to how to make it. Um, so the one I'm tying today is the same, except I've dropped that Matthew Walker because I tell you how to do a Matthew Walker here. So you don't really need to learn how to do it twice. Um, you can, by all means, put one in yourself. You might need a little more cord than I'm using for the next piece. Um, but yeah, that's a variation on it. And this is the one we're tying today, which is um, some plaiting, Matthew Walker, over two um, crowning, a uh, globe knot here, which is made with a um, diamond followed by a Ashley's 954, and some, of course, the uh, blood knots in the end. Okay, let's get started. Um, I've got nine lengths of one meter each, so it's nine meters all up. Um, this is two mil. Um, you can do it in thicker stuff. I'm just doing it this because I had a spare hank of this. Um, we start with the blood knots in the end, which is kind of a bit backwards, but um, it's one way of doing it. There's a number of ways. Um, so that's a blood knot. Supposedly the blood knot got its name from this application because um, the, the knot at the end of the uh, tails of the cat uh, made the whole thing more lethal, <clears throat> more dangerous. Um, so a blood knot is basically one wrap, two wraps and through. There we go. One wrap. Um, your wraps go backwards, back along the shaft. Two wraps. And then through both those loops you've just made. Gives you that overhand knot. There are other ways of doing this. You can always look that up. Okay. It's nine. Now, we need to do some plaiting. So we measure, might as well cut those tails off actually. Okay. So we've got nine uh, tails for the cat of nine tails. Um, the plait we're gonna do is a nine strand plait. It's, um, Ashley 2985. I sometimes use this plait to make belts with two if you do it in um, doubles. So instead of plaiting sing nine singles, you plait nine doubles. Um, so we need to, so we're making a little mini cat. So that's about the length of your, um, your tails. And then the length of the body of the handle will be about that long. So we need to start plaiting here and plait back that way. Um, so we tie a constrictor around those strands, which is over itself, back over that st first standing part and under that cross. So that's a constrictor. Um, depending on how the Matthew Walker um, works out, we can probably leave that on, but sometimes you have to trim it off later. But. Now, I need something to clamp the um, clamp the plating to. Okay, now you start with um, five in one side and four in the other. So just spread them out sort of a bit even.
There's four on that side, five on this side. Just flatten them out a bit. Okay, so the side with five, over two, under two. Over two, under two. Over two, under two. <coughs> Excuse me. Over two, under two. Pull each one up tight as you go. This makes them much neater and braid. Over two, under two. Over two, under two. I often like to do plaiting um, standing, so I might clamp this to a um, door handle or something like that, or the back of a chair or a table. Okay, over two, under two. Yeah, it starts to take shape after a little bit. Over two, under two. Okay, so that's basically your braiding started. I'll um, do the rest of this off camera because it's a bit too boring um, and come back and show you what we do next. Okay, so I finished the braiding. Um, so once you've done that, you fold it to make your loop. Now these ones are going to remain a core so they don't get used again. These ones need to wrap around and we're going to try and not tie another constrictor knot. I don't know if you heard that, that's my dog chasing birds. Um, now another way of tying a constrictor knot, which I use often, it's a bit wasteful because it wastes a bit more cord, um, but you make a loop like so. And then just push the top side back and the bottom side forward so like that and give it a twist and that's your constrictor so you can then put that over something and pull it up okay try and slide it up a bit so these um feeds from the braid are nice and snug. Okay, trim that off. Now, so we've got nine in the middle and nine on the outside. Now it makes sense to just do our um, Matthew Walker with the nine <clears throat> but the knot I finish this with needs an even number. So I'm going to let one of these cords become a core along with the tails and um, tie the Matthew Walker with eight strands, not nine. <clears throat> um, so I'm trying to find one that's sort of more centred. That one looks... Uh, Probably that one there looks as centred as any. So with this one, I'll just um, do a few half hitches around this to hold them all together to keep them um, so they're separate and we don't get them confused later. 
So this is the extra strand that I'm taking out. So we've got eight strands left to tie with. Okay, so now we need to tie a <coughs> Matthew Walker. I've done another video on tying a Matthew Walker, but I'll go through this again. Um, okay, spread them out nice and evenly. Um, start with any one, you make a loop, you pass it round and under all of these and back through itself. So that's your first one. Take the next one back, put it through that first loop you've made. And make another loop about the same size and put it under your thumb in order so that was the first one we laid down the second one goes on top of that now this tail goes round the back of everything and just through its own loop so up through one loop take the next one along which is that one again pass that through everything through that so you're passing it through both the ones you've already tied. Again, make another loop, the same size. Put it under your thumb there in order. Go round underneath everything. And up through its own loop. So that's the one we just made, up through its own loop. So again, find the next one, which is that one. So we're walking around the back through everything, make the same size loop, put it in order and keep it under your thumb nice and tidy. Again go around under everything and push it up through its own loop. That loop could probably be a bit smaller, I'll just pull it a bit tighter. Next one, keep those nice and neat. That's our next one here. We'll go round, uh, excuse me, round everything, through everything, through all those holes. Make another one the same size. Put it under your thumb, in order. Underneath everything, and back through that loop. So back through its own loop. Next one is that one. So through everything, through those all those holes. Same size loop. Keep it under your thumb here. So these are all laid down in order. It's important to keep them in order and to keep them neat. Back up through its own loop. Okay, one more to go, through everything, got the picture now, round, under, there's only one left to go under, but you go underneath that one, and back up through its own loop, and now we've only got one left to go, so that's the last one, through all of those, through that little hole there, which is all of the loops, and then you don't have any more to go under, so you just go back up through its own loop. Okay, so now you've got a fan with all of those overhand knots and all of the tails coming out in order. So now we start here. The first one you tied, you lift it up, and you push it up towards the top and pull it tight a little bit, not all the way. The next one, again push it up and lay it down next to the one that you've just done. You do that all the way around, one at a time. Try and keep them in order, see that one wants to cross over. 
we have to sort these out a bit later anyway pull them all up a little bit okay next one this one here pull it up next one is this one here pull it up so I'm pulling this which shortens it it's important all these go down in order so just do them one at a time there's no quick way of tightening this if you try it to it quickly you'll end up with a mess okay now we're back to the start so keep it in order pull that up a bit more and a bit more just keep going around doing one at a time keeping them in order So we're getting there. And see that one's there. That's my uh, fit. This one here is getting a bit buried. So just pull a bit of slack back. And leave it and pull the next one. So you follow, when you want to know which one to pull to tighten up at this end, you just follow it round. The one that comes out at its base is the one to pull. So that was the one we just took out because it was getting buried. So we've left that a little bit loose and tighten up around it, which sort of closes the gap. And now we can pull that one back into its gap, which is the next one back. Now that's looking pretty close. What I do next is a bit of roll. Just to sort of snug them all in. Because it's hard lay cord, it's quite stiff. Um, and they slot into each other like that. They don't like sitting like that because it's uncomfortable. They just slot in next to each other. So if you roll it, you kind of force them to slot into the easiest spot, which is where they should be. So that's looking pretty good. There's obviously a big gap here. So we just a bit more tightening. Start anywhere and just work your way around one at a time. Sometimes it's, you think you're pulling the right one, but it's actually one of those cores. That's why I've tied them all up. Try and keep them clear. That's not bad. It's a little bit bumped there. Let's just roll it a bit more. Okay, so that's not too bad. I might just give the odd one a little bit tighter. Yeah, and I think that's fine, it feels quite firm. If you can hear that, it's quite a solid little knot. Um, and very neat, and very satisfying how the um, plate just sort of emerges from it. Okay, so that's that part. That's probably the hardest part 
to get right. It's actually a very simple knot, but it's easy to go wrong, especially if you over tighten it or get them out of order. Um, over tighten it at the beginning, just tighten it up slowly and gradually. Now we're going to do some over two crowning, um, which I also have another video on if you want to just do that. I'll just go through the beginnings and then we'll um, speed it up because it takes a bit of time. So spread them all out. This is your core that we've all bundled up. So we're going to tie around that. So start with any one. Go over two. So I'm starting with this one. I'm going over two. And then put it under your thumb. Keep the first one raised a little bit because we have to come through it at the end. So the next one is this one. We go over two. We can tighten that up a little more. This one is the next one. Over two. So it's one, two. So next one, one, two. So the next one. So we go one, two. Next one, one, two. Now, this one's only got one to go over. So we go over it and the first one. Actually, we should have left two raised at the beginning. I forgot what we're doing over two, but I'll show you what we do. So that's over one and over two, which is that first loop. Now, this one doesn't have any loose ones to go over. So it goes through that first hole and through the second hole, which was the second piece we did. So through both of those. So that's in order. The next two chords from this one are that one and that one. And they've both been used already, so you have to go through the loops. Hope that's clear. Now we just go around and tighten it up. When you tighten it, if I'm tightening this one, it starts here. So I want to tighten it in a straight line. So tighten it like that. If I was to tighten it like that, you're loosening these ones while you do it. So tighten it in a straight line so it just travels along its axis. So you rotate the piece in your hands as you go. That should be the last one. Okay, so basically we just do that until we've got a body of work here. Let's loosen this tight, uh, take up a bit more of the slack. Actually, I can trim that one off because we're not going to, it's just a core. We're going to actually trim it down here later on. Let's tie it. And stop it fraying. Just keeps it neater out of the way. Um, okay, so again, start with your first one, go over two and leave that one raised a little bit. And this is what I forgot to do the first time around. The second one, leave that raised again as well. Just makes it easier at the end. So I'll do one more circuit, tighten it up, and then we'll speed through it. Um, so first one goes over two, and we leave it raised. Second one goes over two. We also leave it raised. So those two are both still raised. The next one's the same. This is the next one, over two. We don't need to leave that raised. can pull it tighter. Two, one, two, one, two. So this one goes over that one and then through the first hole. This one goes, there's nothing, no more loose ones to go over. So we go through both of those holes, both those holes there. They're the two that we left raised. 
pull those raised ones tight. Then we just go through and um, tighten it up. I do a rough tighten first and then go through and really cinch it up tight. Okay. Doing this over two crowning, it holds on to the core a bit tighter. So it makes more of a, for more of a firm body to the handle. Okay, so that's the beginning. I'm going to speed through this and um, see you at the end for the final knot, which is a um, 954 and a, a diamond followed with a 954. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've done that much of the over two crowning. That's what, six and a half centimeters. Um, yeah, it's not much to say about it really. Um, the next step is to do a uh, diamond and then crown that with a fancy crown which is in Ashley as 954. Um, but first we start with a diamond which is, so you start with one and you raise it up into a loop like that. Let me zoom in a bit. You raise it up like that. The one preceding it goes over it and up and under the next one. So just leave that one raised. And this one, hold it in your fingers like that. So the one that you had raised, that goes over its next one and then under the following one and put it into your fingers. It holds it up there like that. this one, so the next one off the rank, goes over its neighbour and then under its next neighbour. Again, this one's our next one, goes over its neighbour and then under its next neighbour. Over, under, and hold it in your fingers up here. This one goes over, under, over, under, and hold it up. I'll turn the piece around a bit because we're running out of room. So don't get these mixed up. So that's the next one. Over. There's one more loose one. Under. Now we've only got one more loose one. So we go over it and under that one that wraps around our first one. Okay, now the last one goes over that and under that. Let me zoom in. So this is our last one. Last one's here. Goes over that and through that loop. So that's our diamond constructed. Just pull that one that we left raised, pull it up to even it up so And kind of tidy that up a little bit get them all about the same length we don't we're certainly not pulling it tight yet because um, we've got a long way to go okay so that's about even neat and tidy now we tie the crown on top this is a 954. I've also got another video on how to tie this, but when, this time we're tying it around that core. So it's pretty much the same, but um, you just. Okay, so spread them all out like that in order. Now, don't think of it as going over or under at this point, we're going next to. So take one and pass it over three and just lay it down at the foot 
Leave it raised up there a little bit so it's raised. So we've gone one, two, three, and then we've laid it down there and keep it under your fingers. <coughs> now from that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> from that one, that's the one we just used, we count back to, this is one, two, that's the next one we use. Now we go past three, one, two, three, and we lay it down there next to that one. The reason we don't think of over and under is because we're actually going over that one and under that one because we're on this side of it, not the other side. So don't even think about it. Just go past three and you, what you want to do is lay it down next to the third in line. So that's the one we're going to use. One, two, three. Lay it down next to that third in line. Now turn the piece around again. So that's the one we just used. We count back two. One, two counterclockwise and that's the one we're going to use next so again the third one along is where we place it one two three place it down there next to that and hold it under your fingers so the one we just used is that one there so again we count back two one two now this is the last one we'll be doing so this is the only one you have to think carefully about. You need to still place it next to the third one. So that's one, that's two that's coming up there, and three. So we're placing it there, but we have to go underneath that first crossed over one that we used. So we go over that, under that one, and then we place it down next to that one. So now it's kind of like a loose crown in the middle. Now these last ones that we hold, they're the ones that lock down those ones we just used. So they lock them in place. If we let this go, it's just going to flop around. So this one needs to lock it down. So we lock it down by going under the next one along. So that goes all the way over to there. We just go under there. So that one is locking this one, and this one is locking that one. This one needs to lock that one. Lock it by, they always get pulled back in there, so just pull them out a little bit. Now I'll get my... So you just pull it out a little bit. So this one is locking that one that's under our fingers. Excuse me, it's not going through easily. I'm trying to do it without getting in the way of things. It's a bit tricky. Um, so yeah, it pulls it through there. I've got two more to do. So this one is locking that one. Now it goes under the next one along which is there. So just pull it out a little bit so we can get access to it and put it under. Now the last one, that one, is locking that one. Now its next one is here so it's got well and truly buried so just pull it out Tuck it under there. So that's the first pass of that entire knot. So if you can get to that stage, you're pretty much home and hosed. Just draw it up a bit because we don't need that much slack. So effectively it's two crowns, it's a central crown and an outer crown. So I'm just drawing those up a little bit. Yeah. Let's zoom in. Um, so this is where it comes out. Just clear away all these others. So 
that's where we started. See, it comes out of its right in, in there. That's the beginning of the entire process. From there, we tied the diamond. And then on top of it, we tied a fancy crown. So now we have to double it. So from there, that's the beginning. And this is the end. So they both come out at the same place. So all we do is follow the same quarter round. So that's called following the lead. So we follow that lead. Now we follow it below. That's above, because it's above that um, lead. And below is down this side. So we follow below, it makes a slightly bigger knot. So basically just follow it round. I do the first pass, just all the first push down first. I don't go further than that, I'll do that next. I hope that's clear. So that's one part of the beginning of the doubling. So we just move around. The next one comes out here. <clears throat> and that one that also comes out, that's the beginning of the knot. So we double following that. And remember, follow it below. It wants to be on top, so just give it a little push. Get it down below. Okay, there's the next one. Line it up below that lead. And then follow it down that first pass. There's the next one. There's the lead, and that's our working end. Make it below. Push it down. Okay. <clears throat> and see, they often want to be above, but just jiggle it around until it goes below. Sometimes it's called following below the lead. And uh, and sometimes it's called following outside the lead. So this is outside and inside would be above. Okay, so we've done the first pass of all of them, so just keep following basically. That's the first one we did. Uh, the, well, actually the next one is, but anyway. We've come, the first part of the doubling is there. We just keep following it around. So it goes there, we go there. Make a little hole there. Makes it easier to push it through if you've got a fid to open up the hole with. Next one. Next one's coming down here, so we follow it around there. Just keep going around doing this. Coming down here, follow it around. All this is doing is just opening up a path to make the threading easy.
and the last one for this section. Okay, so that's the last bit of this section. So we keep following. Now, the part of the crown that is around the center has further to travel. So there's more doubling on that one. This one on the outside, the, out, the outer part of the crown. Remember the crown is two segments. It has an inner part and an outer part. And they both lock each other. The outer part is there. And the inner part is here. So the outer part, if I keep going around and follow, so that's my working end and that's my lead. If I follow the lead around past that point, I will have then tripled it. I'll give you I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so if I follow it around, I've then tripled it. Um, this is a slight a different variation. This is the last post I made. I've, I'm not doing this in this one that I'm doing. Um, but this is doubled. So I'm just going to do a double. You can, by all means, do a triple. And there's probably enough cord there to do a triple. Um, but just for ease, I'm just going to do a double, which will end up looking like that. Not the Matthew Walker, but just that part. Um, so I don't want to triple it. So at this point, I have to do the diversion. So we've got to double that part because that still needs to be doubled. But at this point, we don't. So we go to there and then we push underneath everything and come out the bottom. So it's just a way of hiding the lead. So now it looks like it's doubled and carries on doubling, where in the actual fact the lead is coming out the bottom. So we do that with all of them. This next one is one of this part of the central crown. So it has to go all the way around to here before it disappears. So basically you know when it's time to disappear it, when it looks like it's about to be three. So if I carry on, get these out of the way. If I carry there, I'll get three. So I go to there and then push underneath everything. You do the same with all of them. Any that need doing, just do it. I've sort of come, gone out of order here, but that doesn't matter because they're all... It, yeah, it's not, they're not dependent on each other. So that's come out here, so I'm still doubling. But if I was to carry on carry on down there I'll be tripling so we go to that point and then at the bottom so it's double 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 here's another one of the shorter ones so we go down through there it's another one of the inner ones so Following the lead, following the lead. Now if we were to go there, we'd be tripling, so we go in and out the bottom. Hard, ed, hard laid cord is much easier to thread than soft laid because it's, yeah, it's stiff. You can um, use, just poke it. Still got to be doubled, so it comes out here. So then we have to go. So we double, 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 and then hide it through there. Last one.
around here and at this point is where it would triple so we go in there and out the bottom okay so that's your not tied at this stage I forgot about this earlier um, this one is that extra piece we had we're going to trim that because we want nine tails for no reason other than it's just traditional to have nine tails um, so that's our tenth one that we didn't want to use because this knot requires an even number so I couldn't tie that with nine strands I can only tie it with six eight ten uh, yeah but so that one we can take that out get rid of that's the one we used to tie everything together okay so we've got our nine tails coming out the middle um, so now we just have, that's it finished basically that's not tied we just need to fair it up and um, take all the slack out and get it nice and neat um, so these ones coming down that's where we start you sort of pull that up and look inside there that's where it comes out of the um, crowning this um, over two crowning that we did in the beginning the sinnet so that's the beginning so the beginning is the top of that first strand so we just pull a little bit of slack out of each one of the top of that first bottom loop the top one is where we start tightening up a little bit out of each one now it goes up so it's the top of that rising part so pull the top one pull a bit of slack out Top one, top one, top one, top one. Until we get to the last one, which should be that one. Yep. So now the inner one has further to go, so it goes all the way around here. The shorter one, which is the outer crown, comes down and so it's on the outside of this one. This is where we double, so it comes on the lower side of that one. So all the down ones we now do, the long ones have to pull from here all the way to there. So you might need to pull the middle bit, but we'll see. That seems okay. Now we're tightening the outer one of that bottom loop. Okay. Now we just pull these ones don't pull any of them too tight because we've got to go around again give it a squeeze to sort of even things out a bit find out where the slack is so it's starting to get there just go around once more tightening it up I won't uh, speak through this because you'll figure it out um, remember we start in that long there which is the top of the bottom loop or the bite it's called but um, I'm hopeless at naming things and always forget what things are called so forgive me for that 
And forgive me for getting out of frame there. Okay, that's probably enough. Now, it's not strictly necessary, but I often do when I trim these. Um, actually, something else to talk about. Um, there's about 160 mils left over. So you could probably make these cords a little bit shorter if you wanted or extend that a little bit longer or extend these a little bit longer so you've got a bit of left over so you can use that to your discretion as to um, whether you make more crowning before you start this knot or as I said there's enough here to have tripled that knot if you wanted to triple it as well um, all of those are options for you to think about um, so I usually put a dab of glue on the inside of these just to make it a little more permanent. Okay, so I just get some wood glue, probably need more than that. Um, stick just to apply it and pull that quite tight so then it pops back into itself a bit more. And just trim it off. Go around and do each one of those. So pull it a little bit tight so it pops back under. So these ones up here, if, some, if you were to pull on one of those, it would pull the end through and then it's pretty much it an ugly mess after that so that's why I apply a little bit of glue if this thing's just going to be sitting somewhere not being like I, I use these as key fobs um, then you want to make them a little more secure um, so just well, yeah this is uh, wood glue so it, it dries clear it's white to start with but it'll dry clear and you won't see it so just those tails, so you sort of just open up the gap in there and dab a bit underneath. Go around and do it all the way around. Okay. 
Okay, that's all fine. Now you just sort of close up that bottom into the glue and it will hold itself nicely. Give it time to dry. That's it basically. So we've got, um, what was that one? 2985 um, platting here, which is in Ashley. We've got a eight strand Matthew Walker here. We've got eight strands working, making this over two crown. Um, and this is a diamond followed with Ashley's 954, which is a fancy crown which consists of an outer and an inner crown. And these just feed out the bottom, feed out the center rather, which works pretty well. Um, you can put a little shackle on the end and use it as a, um, it's quite nice as a handbag tassel. I've seen them used like that before. They make really good key fobs because you can put your keys in your pocket and this stuff just hangs out so you can then pull it out, which makes really quite a practical and, you know, pretty funky little thing. There, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Um, this is, as I said earlier, I think two mil cord. Um, I usually sell three mil cord, but um, I sometimes sell two, and I can certainly make two if you want it. Um, this was made with nine lengths of one meter cord, and we, as you saw, we had a little bit left over, so you could make it with a little bit less or make a little bit more knotting in it. Um, One hank of my cord is um, about 10 to 11 metres, so there's enough to make one of these out of one hank. Um, there's a link in the bottom where you can go to my store to buy a cord if you want. Um, or I've just use whatever you can get your hands on. Hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. <laughs>